That is an unbroken chain. All right. That is what everybody wants. Now, when I go to sell the property and let's say I want to sell the property and the buyer wants me to, uh, comes to me and says, I want to buy your property. And I say, okay, I own the property. I will remove all the liens. There's nobody out there coming to get it. I promise that if there is, I'll help you. And I promise these forever. What does that sound like to you? That's the general warranty deed that we've been talking about. All right. That, those are the five promises. And that buyer says what? Uh, Raymond, I don't know you. I don't trust you. Because remember, we sell it an arm's length transaction. So how do I prove to them that those five outlandish statements that I just made are actually true? The buyer says, Raymond, I don't know you. I don't believe that you're telling me the truth. And I say, okay, how about I buy you an insurance policy that guarantees I'm telling you the truth. And if I'm lying, the insurance policy will cover it. Will you believe me now? And that buyer says, well, yes, if I have an insurance policy. So that buyer says, I will buy and I would sell with a general warranty deed. Ta-da! Welcome to title insurance. That's all title insurance does. It is the protection of the transaction between the buyer and the seller. Do not confuse title insurance with like homeowner's insurance, like a uh, storm ripped my roof off. That's a different insurance. This title insurance only protects the actual transaction so that if anything is wrong and they didn't catch it, they will pay the insurance policy to cover it. So let's go back and visit an example we talked about yesterday. The title insurance, I'm sitting here in my house. I'm all fat, dumb, and happy. And Sears comes knocking at my door and says, Hey, Raymond, we put a roof on this house two years ago. You now are the owner of the house. We want to get paid or we're going to put a lien on the property. And I'm like, okay, hold on. So I call this person. Now, once again, remember, it's probably not me. It's going to be my insurance company that I got my title insurance through when I bought it. So they're going to call that other owner and say, hey, dude, you promised this quiet enjoyment and you were wrong because Sears is actually out there. You promised further assurance, which said you'd help and you promised warranty forever. So you need to help me with this lien that uh, Sears is claiming. And that owner says, yes, I promised you that with this insurance policy. Uh, wait a minute. When was it? Two years ago? Oh, I did not own it two years ago. Hold on. So now this person calls this person and says, hey, dude, you promised me warranty forever. You promised further assurance. You promised quiet enjoyment. You were wrong. You need to help me now solve that. And that person goes, yes, I promised that. Wait, two years ago? I didn't own it. He has to go back to him. And you see why we want an unbroken chain, because somewhere in that chain, there is a defect that needs to be solved. But because I bought it with a general warranty deed from a dude that had general warranty deed, who had a general warranty deed, that my insurance company is going to allow me to sell it as a general warranty deed to this buyer because they know behind them, they've got another insurance company. And behind them, there's another, all the way back to the builder. So you see why an unbroken chain is preferable in this scenario. All right. 
That is the unbroken chain. Now, let's change the story. Let's see how far back I can go on this. Let's say that Raymond, wrong thing, didn't buy it as a general warranty deed. Let's say this guy went to foreclosure. Okay, you get the point. And I bought it from the bank. Now, when I bought it from the bank, test of knowledge, what did I get? I got a special warranty deed. So now Sears comes knocking at my door and says, Hey, Raymond, we put a roof on this house two years ago. You owe us the money because you're the owner of the house now, or we're going to put a lien on your property. And I say, okay, hold on. I call the bank and I go, Hey, two years ago, Sears put a built roof on this and the bank is going to say what? Too bad, because remember, the special warranty deed does not have quiet enjoyment, further assurance, and warranty forever. All the bank had sold me was, yes, we owned it, and while we owned it, we did nothing to encumber it. All right? So there is no protection. I now have to pay that lien because I own the property. I took a risk buying a bank owned home, knowing I was only getting this. This is called a broken chain. And now when I this buyer comes in and says, hey Raymond, promise me you own the property, promise me that you'll take all the, uh, encumbrances away, promise me warranty forever, further assurance, and uh, quiet enjoyment. And I say, yes, I, I promise that. And the buyer says, no, I don't believe you. And I say, if I get an insurance policy, will you believe me? And the buyer says, most certainly I would believe you. So I go to an insurance company and I say, hey, I want to make those five statements to this buyer. Will you insure me? And the bank or the uh, insurance company is going to go, no, because there is nobody behind you for that protection right here. You did not buy full protection. You cannot sell full protection. We are not going to issue you that insurance policy for a general warranty deed. Now, what does that mean? Well, what it means is two things. One is, as the seller, remember, I could tell that buyer, I can only sell you a special warranty deed. The buyer could say, yes, I'll take that, but I'm not going to pay full market because now I'm running the risk that Sears may come. So instead of that $150,000, i am only going to pay you one hundred and thirty-five. dollars I may take that. <clears throat> or the second thing is, And this is a very common question. How do I elevate so that deed, that special warranty deed that I got, up to a general warranty deed? We are going to get that, all right? So that is the chain of title. Now, when there's a gap, that's what I was talking about, that gap in the title right there because of what I was talking about. So what happens is, that gap can be elevated by this thing called a suit quiet title. Miss that. So what a suit to quiet title is, is a two part scenario. There is a public records search. So what the title company does is they go down to the recorder's office and they search the history of that property all the way back for 40 years. 
or to the root, whichever is the closest, okay? The root is where it originally started. So like in this example, let's say the builder built this in uh, 1999. They can't search back 40 years because it hasn't been existed. So they would search back to the root. Now, if you're buying a building like maybe in the inner city, somewhere where the building's been around since the early 1900s, they would search back 40 years and they are doing a public record search to see everything that has happened with that property. And what they are looking for are liens and then the release of that lien so that they kind of negate each other out. We'll talk about the release in another chapter, but suffice it to say, it's like the negative of the positive or the positive of the negative. You get a lien that gets recorded on your property, then you get a release that shows that lien is gone. So what they're looking for is all the liens and the releases so that they know in the public record, there are no liens existing. But I told you, recording doesn't mean legality. There could be a private lien that has not been recorded yet. So the second part of this suit to quiet title is the attorney who is going to go out and place a memorandum in the local newspaper that says something to the effect of, if you have an interest in the property located at 12 Smith Street, please contact the attorney within the next 30 days. And literally what the attorney does is he just waits and he looks at his watch. What he is waiting for is Sears to step up and go, hey dude, yeah, we do have a lien. We have an interest. We put a roof on that house, all right? If he finds nothing, he waits and waits and waits and 30 days goes by and nothing happens. And the title company finds nothing outstanding in their public search. What you have are two halves. You've got the public search that the title company did. You've got the private search that the attorney did. And when this happens and they find nothing now the uh, insurance company goes, okay, we will now allow you to sell with a general warranty deed. Think about what I just said. <laughs> what they actually are doing is making sure they can't lose before they opt to do business with you. That'd be a good, that's a good gamble, right? If I check all the records to make sure I can't lose, yeah, now I'll sell you an insurance policy. And now the buyer feels happy because they have that insurance policy. All right. So here's a question that gets asked. So now what happens if Sears comes and knocks on this guy's door? He bought a general warranty policy or general warranty deed from me. So he comes back to me and goes, hey, further assurance, warranty forever, blah, 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 blah. And the insurance company goes, hey, Sears. You failed to disclose your lien when you were requested to. Your lien is no longer valid. Actually, the court would say that, not the uh, insurance company. But either way, that lien is not valid because you did not report to that attorney and therefore you missed your chance. So that lien now goes away and the buyer's still protected. Okay. So that would be that suit to quiet title right here. Sometimes you hear it called an action for quiet title. So when they do that search, they will do the search and they will examine the public records. What they're looking for is defects. That's what I was telling you. They're looking for a lien that maybe got recorded 20 years ago and there's no release. Well, if there's no release recorded, the records show that there's still a lien on the property. And they trace that back, like I mentioned, from 40 to 60 years or to the root of the title. Now, the book says 40 to 60 years. I am pretty sure the Indiana State exam 
actually is looking for the answer, 40. Okay, the Florida State exam, looking for the answer, 40. All right, so that, that's how far back they search to try and find problems. What they are trying to create with this private and this public search is a thing called a marketable title. That marketable title would extinguish all of the other liens that are out there, like the Sears example, because of the public and private search. That is what they're trying to create. The person that does this is the abstractor. Once again, there's the OR, the person that actually goes out and searches the public records. This actually is a pretty good high paying job, but it's very stressful because you can't miss anything. You've got to make sure that you find it. So it can be stress, stress uh, induced. 